Working class people need a pay rise, so says the boss of the RMT union, Mick Lynch. Today, he announced an escalation of strike action, eight days of strikes, train strikes before Christmas and in the new year. Uh, Mr Lynch is here. Good evening to you. Good evening. Uh, welcome to Newsnight. So I get that you've been negotiating for many, many months and this is your third transport secretary, but you haven't even met this guy yet and you announced these strikes today. Yes, well, last Friday we were in seriously negotiating with the rail delivery group and they said, we cannot make you an offer. On Saturday they rang me and said, we will make you an offer on Monday at 2 p.m. At five past one on Monday, they phoned me and said, we cannot make you an offer. We're not allowed to make that offer. We have been stopped. And the only people that can stop that going ahead is the Secretary of State. So if that's true... It is true. What is going on? I don't know. The Secretary of State, in writing, in their contract, is responsible for industrial relations and their negotiating mandate. It's written into their contracts. They were stopped from doing it. The only people that can stop them, because there's nobody more senior in transport than the people that I speak to, is the Secretary of State. So he told me, face to face and on the telephone, on a one-to-one uh, -one call, that the offer would be made. And he had to ring back and say, I'm very sorry, I'm not allowed to make that offer. So. I have to work out what's going on. I'll meet Mark Harper on Thursday and I'll say to him how disappointed we are and that he holds the key to this dispute. But in the meantime, in the meantime, you have chosen dates to go on strike at a time of year that is so important to so many people. Yeah, and well, you've chosen those dates. Well, we cancelled strike action for the Queen's uh, I'm death. We I'm cancelled strike about, action I'm talking about now, Poppy the week Day. before Christmas. And we haven't been on strike for nearly two months. Why have so, you chosen these dates? Because the strike has to be kept alive. The dispute has to be kept alive. And the Secretary of State, we believe, has scuppered the talks but that were coming these to maturity. Dates? Two years people have not been able to see their family. It's a time when people are travelling all over the country to relatives, hoping after two years of a nightmare they can be together well, the and dates, you've chosen these the dates days. that we've selected avoid the christmas period our strike action will finish on the 17th and there is a complete week before christmas day that people can make their arrangements so people and should be carefully grateful? i didn't say they should be kept grateful you asked us why we've chosen the dates the dates we've chosen avoid the christmas period and everybody should be able to travel if the train operating companies can run a service let's not forget they are completely incapable of running a service when there's no industrial action, which hasn't been in existence for the last two months, Let to allow for these talks, which have produced nothing. Let me tell you what the British Beer and Pub Association say about this. It's devastating news for their industry. Pubs across the country will be relying on a busy Christmas period to pull them through what is set to be an incredibly difficult winter. They're hoping to make the most of Christmas party bookings and festive gatherings for the first time in three years. The weeks of the strikes are our busiest. Uh, the UK hospitality. This will deal a hammer blow to hard-pressed hospitality businesses. Yeah, and they need to take this up with the government as well as us. This government is intent on pursuing this industrial action. They don't want a settlement to the dispute. I can't understand why they've scuppered that, why they won't allow Network Rail or the train operating companies to make an offer. Everybody in the industry knows what to do to resolve this dispute. The only people who have stopped that have been Grant Shapps, Anne-Marie Trevelyan and now Mark Harper. They've done nothing except sit on their hands and make bellicose statements up until now you about the unions and about the future of industrial relations. You've had eight strikes so far and they've all failed because you're still doing it. Well, they haven't failed because they haven't implemented their plans to cut thousands of jobs. They haven't made the changes to terms and conditions that we're campaigning against. And nor have you received a pay rise for your members, which but, is what you want. Exactly. So we need to get a solution. And it, there's a free party deal to be done here. And the government must put themselves in a place where they create the right environment and show goodwill and be facilitators rather than an obstacle to the settlement. Are you still asking for a 7% rise or has that changed? since inflation's changed? We have never put a figure on what we're prepared to negotiate. The companies want changes, what they call modernisation. We want job security and a suitable pay rise. When we get an offer that is worthy of consideration, we will put that to our members in a referendum and they will decide whether they support the proposals. And you're still asking for members who are, who are on £20,000, £30,000, £50,000, £80,000? 
We're asking for settlement across the railway industry. Some of our members are on 18,000. Most of our members are on less than 32,000 in this dispute. There are some higher paid people and lower paid people, just as there are in this studio right now. They all deserve a pay rise because they're all struggling with the cost of living crisis. And that's true across the country in all sectors. Just to say, we asked the Rail Delivery Group, we asked Network Rail, we asked the government to join us tonight. No one was available. If these... Well, I wonder why. If these strikes don't lead to a deal, will you call more? Is there further escalation on the cards? Well, we have a mandate for the next six months under the government's anti-trade union laws. We are seeking a settlement. I attend these meetings personally. Senior officers attend these meetings. We're in negotiations with Network Rail again on Friday. I don't know when the rail operator is going to uh, bring us back. But if there is a deal to be done, we'll be there trying to hammer it out with the people across the table. I don't know if you heard Labour Stephen Kinnock earlier. He said we support the RMT's right to strike. Is that enough for you from the Labour Party. No, the Labour Party needs to sort out its values, whether it's on the side of the working people in this country who are struggling on every measure. But what was wrong with what he said? Well, what he said was ambivalent. He said he supports our right to strike, but not the issues that are in dispute. He hasn't said he'll support the nurses and health workers, our educators, and our people in the, in the private sector. The only people that are getting pay rises at the minute are people like the Liverpool Dockers, who got 14 to 18 percent through forceful industrial action. They didn't support them. They haven't said they support the railway workers either issues. They say they yeah, support our rights. That's good. But they've got to identify with working people's struggles to get working people's votes in the future. Thank you very much for talking to our viewers tonight.